Welcome to the Insomnia Project. You may have heard that the music is different that you're listening to. That's because these are our holiday episodes, and they tend to be a little bit peppier, so I don't know how sleep-inducing it is, but hopefully it will make you feel relaxed. I find Christmas music really calming, actually, or holiday music. Uh, most music is sure in the holidays is Christmas yeah. music. Uh, the vast majority, um, but also a crackling fire, even if it's one I, I find on TV, listening to that on any place that I listen to things or just watching it on TV. And that's Amanda Barker. <laughs> I didn't introduce I'm myself. sure you know, you've heard her <laughs> voice before, and I'm Marco Timpano. And Amanda, you sort of brought me to love having the fireplace channel on mm-hmm. during the winter months that, you know, a lot of the holidays fall in. I think it's interesting that it feels warmer when it's on, even though obviously it's not creating any heat. Do you find that? It certainly gives the feeling of warmth. Mm -hmm. Today we put up our tree to the image of the fireplace channel. That's right. And it was quite delightful. And we do have, uh, we actually, I'm I'm a great lover of fireplaces myself. You, You are. I am. As a child, my mother, uh, when my brother was born or right before, or maybe right after, um, she decided to build on our house, to put an extension on our house because uh, we didn't have a bedroom for my little brother uh, when he was being born, maybe right before. So in any event, we, my parents decided that it was time we needed to build on to our little Cape Cod house. And so, um, so we did. And... Because my mother's best friend's husband was a brick mason and ran a brick masonry, I guess it's called, company, um, she decided she wanted a big fireplace in the kitchen and um, like a big field stone fireplace. Like a oh, hearth. So, yeah, so the. It was so, huge. And the stones would be. They were huge, right. yeah. And because she was building a chimney, um, for that, that if you have one chimney or flue, then you can build actually fireplaces off of it, many. So she built as a long fire. As, as long as they're in line with the yes. chimney, right? So yes. on the first floor, the second floor, yes. or the oh, third like floor. Like a laundry chute, really. Right. Yeah. So she built, um, she decided, why not? Um, she was getting it at a great discount because she it was a friend of family, right? So anyway, she built one into her bedroom as well. So oh, she that's had wonderful. So she had a fire in her bedroom, a fire in the kitchen, and then the house had a fireplace already that we used from time to time. So... Yeah, we had a lot of fireplaces. You know, as a consequence, we have an electric fireplace in our bedroom. We do, that we got, actually, not not dissimilarly, um, that we got on um, from, uh, I don't even know how to put it, promotional, uh, from a promotional gig. Yeah. So we got it for a song, quite We got literally. it for quite a song, and... We've loved it ever since. We really have. And I, I really said, I know it's just a little electric, the most basic model, um, but it, we, it had shelving and I thought the shelving will be good and we'll put the TV on it. And then in the winter, it serves as a little fireplace. Yeah, yeah. it's quite it's quite lovely. And we have I, a, a electric one downstairs too. I wasn't convinced that I would like it. Oh, when, really? Yeah. When you first said, let's get this electric fireplace, because my father worked in wood burning stoves. Oh, I so see. I'm... When I think of fireplaces and wood-burning stoves, I love the crackling sounds. I mean, so do I. Listen, I I will take a real one over a faker any day of the week, but most of us don't have the luxury of a real one, so I will take the faker. Well, then you said, let's get this. It provides heat Mm -hmm. and is quite lovely, the look of it. And I said, okay, let's do it. And now I love it too. Yeah. I really do. It's not super glam, but the mm, heat is good. And because we live in the city, we can't... No, you're not allowed to have In our city, you're not allowed to have a wood-burning fireplace. Yeah. Now, but on this topic and and (laughs) sort of weaving our way towards the holidays, Mm. I want to talk about mantles and I want to talk about hanging stockings there with or without care. Okay. So how (laughs) important are mantles for you? I love a mantle. What makes a good mantle? I like a wood... Any... I mean, thought makes a good mantle and I like it wide enough that you could actually put 
knickknack or tchotchke, um, or that you could hang a stocking off of it, or that, you know, uh, you could put the remotes if you have a TV over it. Our friend Jeff, who celebrates Hanukkah, puts the most beautiful menorah on his mantle mm-hmm. of his fireplace. Mm-hmm. And whenever we go there and we celebrate Hanukkah with him and his family, it is one of the most beautiful things ever. And as a consequence, I asked my mother, who's a very keen knitter, to knit him a stocking right. that has the Star of David on it. Right. And she did. So it's a white stocking with a blue Star of David on it. And we <laughs> gave it to him because his wife celebrates Christmas and he celebrates Hanukkah. And so I gave it to him. And, and they both love both. And they both love both. So on one side, there's the Star of David stocking hanging. Mm-hmm. And on the other side of the mantle is a more Christmas theme. If anything, stocking. I think she really loves Hanukkah because she loves the opportunity to do eight uh, nights and so on. And he loves Christmas. Yeah, so they're, they're a great team yeah. and so fun to be around. I'm going to try to get Jeff on the on the podcast. He's, That'd be great. Yeah, he's not the easiest. He's one of my closest and dearest friends and he is yet to be on. Right. But, okay, so you like a mantle. I like that... my, I love a butcher block. So okay. I like, I like natural wood nine times out of 10. How about you? I don't know about a butcher block for a mantle. I see more like a solid piece of wood versus yeah. uh, like wood that's kind of put, put together. Do to... you like a solid piece that sort of has the, the waves and the knots in it? You know, like it's not a, completely perfect piece no my preference is like a beautiful marble mantle oh really yeah my preference is or you know those yeah or those (laughs) you know those art deco style um hearths with a art deco style mantle we are so different yeah we are so different (laughs) rustic wood over there how do we live i don't know i give me wood any day of the week (laughs) give me something art deco art nouveau and i'm happy as can be (sighs) Um, that's funny. But that said, we both like to have our stockings hung by the fire with or without care. To, you know to... our mantle downstairs is butcher block, right? Yeah. Okay. No, that's not butcher block. Mm, except that it is. Is that mantle butcher block? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's not a real fireplace. Okay. I mean, it's an electric fireplace. Right, right. But I mean... It... You know, after this episode, I'm going to go downstairs to check if it is you... a... Please go. Okay. He had leftover butcher block, so oh. that's why I went with it. Okay. Because I love wood. Right. So let's talk about stockings. Okay. So my mom would make our stockings. From when you were kids, when it was yeah, just you and she, Becca? Yeah. And, and with Garrett, my brother too, she would make our stockings and uh, she likes to sew. She always says she's not a great sewer, but she's certainly better than anybody else. I, she's better than me anyway. Um, she sews out of necessity. My mother-in-law can make curtains like nobody's business. She, but she does not see herself as a sewer. She's great. She, like I said, she in today's day and age, she's quite a sewer, but f- she compares herself, I think, to her mother who made all her own clothes. If you're wondering who my mother-in-law is, <laughs> she's the woman who's married to fan favorite Daniel Barker, <laughs> who everyone seems to know. Um, so she... Uh, she would make our stockings out of, um, often she'd make them out of, truth be told, old fabric scraps that she had. That's wonderful. So she would take, like if she made me a vest, she mm-hmm. would have some leftover vest or um, pillows, like leftover material for pillows. She mm-hmm. makes a lot of pillows. Um, so she would sometimes do that or sometimes she would intentionally buy the fabric. It sounds to me like the stocking of many colors. She, yes. She would make new stockings every year to two years, depending. She she gets bored easily, and so, uh, so she would she would always craft something different and something new, and she would she would line them, write our names in uh, gold pen usually oh. on them. Sometimes she'd stitch, but normally she would, didn't have the time for that, so right. she'd write the names in gold pen. How about you? My mother would would make us stockings as well. Yeah. Oftentimes it was like a stocking you would buy and then she would add to it. So she would mm. she would sew in our names. She wouldn't sew in our names. I shouldn't say that. She would stitch our names. Oh, in, okay. Cross stitch our names. Oh, in. wow. Yeah. So you know, because she's a good cross stitcher and a good. I see. I've never seen her cross stitch. No. But I I imagine she's a oh, she's you... an exceptional crocheter. Well, you've seen. <gasps> oh, I've seen what she's done. You know what? I've never seen her sitting and cross stitching. But I guess yeah. I didn't know her when she was into that as much. Yeah. 
Um, what would you get in your stock? First of all, do you like a deep stocking or a shallow stocking? In other words, do you like a stocking that when things are put in it, it you really have to reach into it? Or do you prefer a stocking where you can just <sighs> turn it over and it I all have falls out? two down? answers. Okay. That was my ring hitting the table in case anyone's As wondering. a child, give me a nice deep stocking where I'm finding some real good treasures, treasures in the toe. Yes. But as an adult, a deep stocking usually doesn't stay up because it's so heavy. You have to like lay it. Oh, by the fire like okay. it won't stay a, a stocking that full is so weighted even the the hard weights that we use to hold the stockings you cannot hold it so unless you, you put you know, a severe like a nail nail into the into wood. your mantle yeah. which we're not doing so um so as an adult <laughs> a shallow stocking would probably hold less and be more appropriate for to single people that live together well not single we're married but um i forget the question deep or shallow when it comes oh, to give me a deep stocking i really have to work to get the last <laughs> little stocking stuffer out of and to be honest with you we never used to stuff our stockings we never used to put little gifts in our stocking what that's so weird to me so you guys would get stockings and you and what santa just forgot they were there no we would just have it there for for, for deco de- decoration yeah did you understand that Santa was supposed to come and fill your stocking? No, that's not how we dealt with Santa and how our <laughs> stockings. Our stockings were just decoration. But didn't people say to you as a child, Santa puts gifts in the stocking? No, I never really heard that. Santa. When did you clue in that uh, San- that you would get gifts in the stocking? When I married you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, We never used to do that. Um, that was just wasn't our thing. Okay. Santa would leave the presents under the tree, which for me, Santa still does. Maybe Santa puts them in your stocking, but he leaves them under the tree. Well, for it me. depends on if we have stockings. I mean, if we have them, yes. We've get, always had stockings, you and I. Every year? Yeah, since we've been married. Really? No. Not every year. Really? Every year. Every year? Okay. I, th- I think you forget to f- forget about the stockings because I wrap... Here's an interesting thing. So oh, yeah. I wrap the stocking stuffers you're not supposed to wrap stocking what stuffers. what are these rules you live hard and fast by i <laughs> i wrap i i never understood this you just throw little things in a stocking and you don't wrap them for you the world to see the stocking that's that's the stocking is the wrap you wake up christmas morning okay this so, is first of all Santa... don't get angry because you're this starting to sound Santa... angry and this no, no. is supposed to relax people i'm not angry okay but I, I just wanted to say something. Sure. So in my house, you would yes. wake up Christmas morning. You knew what Santa left because Santa would leave the gifts unwrapped. So all the things that were unwrapped under the tree and in the stocking were from Santa. Everything that was wrapped was wrapped with our paper. These are Massachusetts rules. <laughs> this is Massachusetts <laughs> rules stockings. I believe okay. if you're going to go into the stocking... You're going to see inside it. You'll see what's in there. So wrap the little trinkets. No, you're asleep when Santa comes. Oh, I guess. But even still, your siblings can look inside your stocking. That's why you have to attack it. No. I don't like this football rules. No. Well, you didn't have an older sister who would would suspiciously get the same things in her stocking. Oh, and she was suspicious. We would get matching things. We'd always get lifesaver books. Um, there were certain things we got in our stockings every year. We get lifesaver books every First year. First of all, explain what a lifesaver book is for anyone who's like <laughs> do you know under the age of... Of course I do. Under the age of 30, you might be like, what are they talking about? Uh, I don't know how to explain it. It was all these different flavors of lifesavers. The lifesaver candies, yep. The best to me was always the regular one. No, rum raisin. Oh, the buttered rum. Yeah, no. Yeah, buttered rum was I my favorite. It. Oh, it's my favorite. I always gave it to my oh, mom. Oh, my goodness, I hated that's it. the best one. I hated Even that one. Even as a child, I loved that as one. As a child, I was like, why do I want rum flavored candy? Anyway. Butter um, rum. Buttered rum, yeah. Not yeah. rum raisin. There were no raisins. Well, sorry. Butter <laughs> raisins. <laughs> in my lifesaver. Um, and I don't remember other ones other than butter Peppermint. Rum. Oh, was there? Um, there was the one that had the the hole filled in in the lifesaver with like a, a, a mint. Cert, a um, certs? No, it wasn't a certs, <laughs> but it had a certs like 
quality, quality to, to it. it. Anyway, so you would get it would be like look like a book, and you would open it up, and there'd be like five packs of lifesavers on both sides. Yeah. You know, instead of where there's pages, there were lifesavers. I love that. I haven't seen those. I know, I haven't if seen I, them in a long I saw time. them, we always got them in our stocking every year. My sister and I, and we'd get things like pens. Like you wouldn't put in our house. You Santa didn't leave expensive things in the stocking. Okay. You would never get a, a nice, a beautiful ring, for example, in a stocking. Okay. You would get pens. You would get lifesavers. You would get lip gloss. You would get. Uh, Candy, you would get. You definitely would get candy. Those gold coins. Oh yes. Reese's uh, peanut butter cups. So um, a lot of chocolates. It sounds like. So you're chocolates and knickknacks. Okay, so it sounds like a Halloween stocking. Okay. A Halloween stocking. It was, it was like little things you could use. Hair clips were a big one. Barrettes, if you will. They were yes, <laughs> and I did wear them. My mom used to make barrettes that had like ribbons in them that was a big oh, okay. thing anyway so so you you would wake up and santa would choose to leave all the gifts under the tree and wrapped i see no i'm asking oh yes they would they well yes we would have no santa would wrap our presents <laughs> okay i mean it's santa after all he's not gonna leave presents unwrapped well in like, massachusetts he does well maybe he's, he's tired <laughs> by the time he gets to the cake um and so and you and the stockings just just Hung on the mantle with no care. I feel like... In hopes that St. Nicholas will ignore them. I feel like the stockings may have had things in that my mom would have put in, not Santa. We never, we never looked at the, we never looked at the stocking as a, as a conduit for Santa to place an item for the child because you couldn't get decent things in the stocking whereas you could get a game well that's why you have to lay the stocking down so often what would happen is santa would prop the stocking up against the fireplace because it would no longer hang but hang on a second but you sent then santa wouldn't be able to give you a toy or a game like for example a little game yes but not a game game like a big game would be under the tree yeah, but see, Santa would leave the big games under the tree for me. So one of my favorite games was Mousetrap, which Mousetrap would not be able to fit in a stocking. Why would it? It's not a stocking stuffer. No. It's, it's a gift. And that's what Santa gave me was Mousetrap, not some little barrettes and these kind of things. Santa did both in my house. That's what I'm saying. Santa didn't oh. just leave the stockings. Oh, I thought Santa but left. No, that's what I'm saying. The gifts under the tree. You knew it was Santa's gifts because they were unwrapped. And so the gifts under the tree, like Barbie Townhouse, would be unwrapped. It would be a big Barbie Townhouse. You'd come down the stairs and you'd be like, oh, and you'd see the thing. So Santa didn't wrap your gifts? I've said that three times now. And it yes. still doesn't register. So you, that's how you'd know it was from Santa. So the wrapped had... gifts were from my parents. Oh, I see. So Barbie Townhouse would be yes. under your tree. Yes. What was Barbie Townhouse? It was actually my sister's gift. Um, so what did Santa leave you that year if she got Barbie Townhouse? Um, I think I... Uh, get in Shape Girl. <laughs> I was really into Get in Shape Girl. <laughs> I, I need to know what Barbie Townhouse is, and then I need to know... Do you not know what Get in Shape Girl was? <laughs> no. It that's... was all the rage in 1985. Okay, what was Get in Shape Girl? Let's get in go. Shape Girl. I could sing you the, the commercial, Please, but I don't, but don't, don't, I don't want to wake anybody up. Okay, though. sing it softly if you can. <laughs> sing it as a jazz tune. <laughs> Are you able to sing it? Yeah, I can, but okay. I'm going to try not to laugh. Okay, here we go. Get in shape, girl. You'll love the feeling. Get in shape, girl. It's so appealing. That was the um, get in shape. commercial of Get in Shape. Girl. And that was more the jazzy version than the... Than yeah, the, okay. but that was pretty much the song. All right. Um, so it was little sets that you got. You got a cassette tape, and then you got workout gear tailored to that exercise. And you had all the exercises on a sheet, and then but you also had the um, the tape, so you'd listen to the like tape. Like cassette, tape cassette? Yeah. Or video? Okay. No, tape cassette. Okay. Like you put it in your Walkman or whatever. Okay. And it would be like, welcome to Get In Shape, girl. And it it would be like leg warmers and little hand weights and a headband. Or one was like a jump rope. And, was the idea that you, and wrist cuffs. Was the idea that you and your doll, the Get In Shape Girl no, doll? No, it was just me. I, the girl was me. Oh, so there was no Get doll? Get In Shape Girl. Like, <laughs> I thought it was... That's, that's, your, that's the eight-year-old girl that's receiving it. Oh, you thought... I thought it was a doll called no. Get In Shape Girl. No, it was but a... It was, it was, it was, it was, it was simply a cassette 
and, it and was leg cassette, warmers? But it was packaged in a way okay. that I that was really appealing to my eight year old sensibilities. Like the jump rope, I think had like wrist warmers. Okay. And uh, and like a little head warmer or something like it was like each thing had a I just remember I had the weights Mm -hmm. for a long time I had those little hand weights and the jump rope those are the ones I remember but there was there was like five to eight packages that you could get and what was the Barbie townhouse that your sister that was that was Barbie when she lives her life in the city (laughs) she 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 lives in a townhouse like we do now I I guess I'm Barbie okay can I ask you this then the key question here is did Barbie in the Barbie townhouse have a fireplace? And if so, what was the mantle like in the Barbie townhouse fireplace? You'll have to ask my sister. <sighs> but I don't think Barbie townhouse had a mantle because it was a intended for city living. So if anything, she had an electric fireplace, okay. which I don't think they had really back then. It sounds like the precursor to Sex in the City was the Barbie, Barbie townhouse. Barbie townhouse? Yeah. yeah. I okay. mean, kind of. Oh, my wow. sister had dreams of... She wanted to move to Chicago and be an architect. That was her. Well, it stands to reason if she's getting Barbie townhouses yeah, that's as what a she kid. She wanted to do. The My townhouse. goodness. Anyway, so she got Barbie townhouse, and that year, I, I know that year pretty well because um, we have it on tape. So on an old Super Eight movie. That's so great. Anyway, so um, yeah, so that's how you knew. So all the stuff in the stocking. Back to that. Mm-hmm. Was not wrapped. Now, some people, yes, uh, British people. Careful, we have a lot of British listeners. Oh, careful. Well, just <laughs> you know, listen, we have a lot of wonderful British. I know fans. that's okay. why I'm bringing it up. Right. That's actually why I'm bringing All right. it up. Right. Let's see. Let's see have how a tradition of okay. getting an orange in their stocking. We're gonna get emails, Amanda. I know we are, but please continue. I, I'm saying it for that reason okay. because. No, I'm saying we're gonna get an email saying. We don't do that. Well... Okay, go on. No, I, I want to hear, and I'm sure our British listeners want to hear, they get oranges in their stockings. That's it. Yeah. That's that's the end of the story? That would... We, as children mm-hmm. in Massachusetts, because that's all I can speak to, we would have been really not pleased with a Santa Claus <laughs> that brought us an orange. I, I, did, I didn't like oranges in the first place. So being, what about a mandarin or something? You know, I would get mandarins in my stockings. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I think it's a, well, I don't know. Is it a European thing, a British thing? All I know is it sure wasn't an American thing. We would get walnuts and mandarins amongst other things. You make it sound like all the Brits would get is an orange. No, no. I'm I just think saying, they also got I think like, there's a tradition to put an orange like in the toe of the stocking or something like that. Nothing wrong with that. And I think a lot of Brits. I'm just saying me as an eight-year-old girl. Would not have been happy with an orange in our stocking. It was not in our world. What about Terry's chocolate orange that you smash? I've ne- I only started. I only had one mm-hmm. when I moved to Canada. That is not a thing we. There's would ever nothing have in wrong the with that. So, those ones are okay, but I really like <laughs> the raspberry. They used to have a Terry's raspberry. Yes, chocolate. they did. Yes, I enjoy ra- a raspberry and chocolate combo. I like this. I like the mint one, which is not easy to find here in Canada. Oh, I haven't seen a Terry's anything in a while. Oh, I've seen them. Yeah, yeah? they're not. In, they're not inexpensive. They really are. They really are a treat. We. They used to be. I feel like. I feel like there was a time where you got them everywhere, and now I don't think I've seen them. No, they are. You if take we... it and you smash it, and then all the orange pieces are come apart. Right? That's right. Yeah. It's kind of weird, isn't it? It's not. It's lovely. Well, I know what you're getting in your stock. I. I would. Can you get me the mint one, Santa? If you speak to Santa, okay. tell him I want the mint one. And I don't I'll, I'll, remember a mint one. There's a mint one. It's it's tremendous. You know what? I do like the orange one. I do prefer the raspberry one. I like the raspberry. If there was a strawberry one, you don't have to you don't have to say another word, um, as far as I'm concerned, because chocolate strawberries for sure. Is that your favorite fruit and chocolate combo? I think banana and chocolate. Oh yeah. Is my favorite, but strawberry and chocolate is. I like is raspberry it. and chocolate, but I don't know if I like I like banana and chocolate too, but I wouldn't want it in an orange. Well, no, it would just be shaped round. It wouldn't have to be. <laughs> no, 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 but I don't know that I would like a Terry's banana chocolate is what I'm saying. Why? I don't know. It just seems weird to me. But that that's what I'm saying. So citrus fruit has a Christmas tie-in. Of course. But for us in the States, it most certainly did not. Because it was considered, that would have been like putting broccoli in our stocking. We would not have it. 
we were unhealthy. What can I say? Well, hence the, what was it? Get in shape, girl? Yes. Cassette you got? <laughs> you love the feeling. Anyway. Well, that's the end of this episode. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Our holiday episodes tend to be a little peppier. They tend to be a little bit more fun, shall we say. You're going to go look at that mantle downstairs. Yeah. That's been in our house for years. I am going to go look at that mantle. And then I'm going to look up what a get, get in shape girl <laughs> from the 80s looks like. Thank you for joining us. I also want to say thank you to uh, Toronto.com, I should say, T-R-N-O.com, that voted our podcast one of the 10 best comedy podcasts Amazing. in the city. And while we are both comedians, we really try hard not to make our episodes funny, but people do find a lot of humor in them. So I'm cr very grateful to all that. I'm often reminded of um, a game they used to play at at Second City, mm -hmm. at, but mostly at um, a Saturday Night Live. They would do this to warm up and they would call it unfunny and mm -hmm. they do you'd have to do everything in your power to just have a conversation and not be funny. Right. I feel like that's our exercise often. We fail sometimes, but... Listen, regardless of what you get in stock in your stocking or if you get anything in your stockings, I want you to know that our greatest gift is your listenership. So thank you so much for listening to the Insomnia Project. But we want to wish you, our listeners, all the best for the holidays. And listen, you're always welcome to join us and tweet us during the holidays. And we will do our best to tweet back out to you. Until tomorrow, we hope you were able to listen, enjoy, and who knows, maybe even sleep. <laughs>